Hi everybody, it's Lindsay and welcome back to Oxcord History. Today we're going to be talking about the World Wide Web. So the World Wide Web is actually different than the internet. The internet was developed back in the 1960s during the Cold War and that was when computers were bigger than cars filled up entire rooms and could not just sit in your lap like they can today. So back in the 60s, American scientists and military experts feared that the Soviets were going to send some nuclear attack over to us that would ruin our telephone system and ruin communication all across the country. Out of that fear came a new form of communication, which was the internet. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the World Wide Web. Moving through the developments of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I'm going to plot this right in the 1990s. Before the World Wide Web, there were a bunch of mini networks that were able to communicate with each other. Um, they were spread across the world, but the entire world wasn't connected just yet. So there's this guy in England named Tim Berners-Lee. Don't worry, this all goes back to American innovation, but we're just hanging out in Europe for the next few seconds. Our guy Tim was a British programmer who did his development in Switzerland, and he wanted to create a way for everyone to be able to access all types of files and information in one web or one source. Thus, the internet we know today, aka the World Wide Web, was launched. From the World Wide Web came smaller webs um, that later became known as websites. And websites were more specific sources for files and other information. And boom, websites, internet, cold war, happiness, success. <laughs> the first major web browser was called Mosaic and that launched in 1993 for everybody to be able to use. The internet was no longer just used for government purposes and regular old people like you and me started to get access to the internet. After Mosaic, you get Netscape, the Microsoft company, and Windows. We get Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, and all that good stuff. So through the 90s, the idea of the internet and what it could be was moving at 100 miles per hour. At the time, lots of people were very skeptical of the internet and thought it was just a phase in human culture, but that's the exact opposite of what it was as you know. In 2003, our main man, Steve Jobs, releases Safari, and the special thing about Safari was it was exclusive to Macintosh personal computers. Safari would later be programmed onto our iPhones, our iPads, the iPod Touch, if you remember, and so now the internet lets us access all types of information in the palm of our hands within seconds. So right now you're presumably watching this video on YouTube that you're accessing through the internet that you're watching on your laptop or your phone. We connect with our friends, shop, um, do homework, write emails, order lunch, watch movies, and not to mention communicate all across the world. All through the internet. Judging by what can be done in 30 years, I imagine that the next 30 years are going to look completely different. Thank you so much for watching Oxcore History. I hope you enjoyed that brief overview of the internet and the World Wide Web. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.